Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nays Anise, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. And as the title says below, this is going to be the announcement for the Daughter of Increase Faith Reads Readathon that I will be hosting for the month of January. Okay, guys, so yes, I am hosting a readathon. It's going to be a Christian faith based book readathon for the month of January, and I'm so, so excited about doing this. As a booktuber and a book nerd, I join in on a lot of readathons every month. There's a readathon going, but I've never really found one that's based off of, you know, faith and Christian books and things like that. So I wanted to. Go ahead, jump on it, and start one out. If there is one, I haven't seen one. I looked it up and couldn't find one. Um, so, yeah, I am excited to be doing this with you guys. I did post it up in the Facebook group. If you guys are not a part of the Facebook group, definitely join by clicking the links down below. But um, I did a poll to see if you guys would be interested in a two-week readathon or a one-month readathon. And a lot of you guys voted for a month, one-month readathon. So that's what we're going to do. So from January 1st to the 31st, strictly going to be reading okay just a whole month of reading christian faith-based books which i'm so excited about so for this this is going to be a two-part kind of challenge the challenge of course with the reading is going to be all month but for the first seven days i'm going to have photo challenges as well and you will be able to enter in for the giveaway so basically I have this piece of paper here, which I'm going to actually update because I forgot to put the hashtag and all that information. So this is going to be updated before you guys get it. But um, just click the link down below to grab a copy. But basically it's going to be seven days of you taking photos with your books that are faith related. So for day one, you're just going to snap a picture of your TBR. Um, I have 10 prompts, which we'll get into next, but of those 10 prompts, you can gather your TBR that you, you know, the books you think you're going to read or want to read to for the month. Um, and take a picture pretty much TBR pal um, for day two January 2nd the prompt is a TBR five star prediction so anything that you took a picture of from day one that you have not read and you believe is going to be a five star prediction take a picture of it whether it's your whole TBR one book two book four books doesn't matter just snap a picture for January 3rd, it's going to be Read by Fire. So that can be candlelight, that can be a fireplace. Now, if you like me and don't own a fireplace, which you can do, and I'm going to tell you right now, go on YouTube, just type in Fireplace Sounds. A fireplace is going to pop up. Put your book in front of that. There you go. So we have that as an option. Um, for January 4th, it's going to be Book and a Hot Drink. So that can be tea, coffee, hot chocolate, frappuccinos, um, lattes, anything hot okay a hot drink um january 5th is going to be book and bible now you can pair this with a non-fiction and a bible or like i'm gonna do i'm gonna pair a biblical fiction book with my bible and that actual specific like part in the bible so that's what i'm gonna do but that's for january 5th january 6th is going to be cozy reading so that can be you in a robe with your book that can be your bed in a book that can be um your favorite spot to read with the book Whatever you think cozy reading is in your mind, take a picture and that's cozy reading. And the last prompt, which is going to, la yeah, the last prompt for January 7th is to snap a photo of your current read. Um, so whatever you're currently reading on that day for January 7th, just take a picture of it and post it. You can post this onto Instagram, you can post it in the Facebook group, you can post it on the Daughter of Increase Facebook page. Um, but the hashtag, I'm going to throw it on the screen, is going to be hashtag DOI Faith Reads. Um, so yeah, if you're going to do that, just use that hashtag so that I can see it and enter you guys into the giveaway. So going on to the reading prompts, here we are. There are 10 reading prompts. Now keep in mind, you do not have to do any of these prompts. You can do some of the prompts. You can do one of the prompts. You can do none of the prompts. The whole idea and point of the month is to read Christian faith reads. That is it. Anything that is going to edify your walk with God, read it. Be it biblical fiction, Christian fiction, Christian nonfiction, studying the Bible, anything that's going to edify. And um, that's pretty much what this is going to be about. Now, I will have a more updated video for you guys the closer we get to the month. Um, but this is just a preliminary me letting you guys know about the announcement. 
there we go. But the first prompt is going to be read a book based on a well-known biblical person. And I have a bunch of books here to run through with you guys just as samples. So for me, that's going to be The Samaritan Woman. I have not read this book. This is by Diana Wallace Taylor's. And this is Journey to the Well. Yes, this is about The Samaritan Woman and Jesus. And um, she's well-known. Very well-known. Um, so I decided this would be my pick for that prompt. Prompt number two is to read a book about a lesser known biblical person. So that means anybody outside of Moses, Peter, Paul, Jesus, and things like that. People you see in the Bible, but they're not mentioned heavily in the Bible. So for that, I have two options. I have Slender Reads by Taxi Susan Gregory, which is Jochebed's Hope, basically about the mother of Moses. We don't really know much about her. She's mentioned, but to me, she's not like a well-known biblical person. The next book I have is going to be Pharaoh's Daughter by Misu Andrews. Pharaoh's daughter basically is a daughter that found Moses. Pretty much. So, um, she's known, but she's not, like, well-known, so she's lesser known in the Bible. Um, so we have this as an option. The third prompt is to read a book with the title based on a book from the Bible. So for that, I'm, I just got Esther by Angela Hunt. <laughs> um, Esther is a book of the Bible, so pretty much, yeah. But any book, be it biblical fiction or Christian fiction, if it has... Um, a book of the Bible in the title, then you can use that book. The fourth one is to read a Christian nonfiction. So within the month, just pick up a Christian nonfiction. For me, I have this one. It is A Cloud by Day, A Fire by Night, A.W. Tozer, Finding and Following God's Will for You, and it's edited and compiled by James L. Snyder. So this is basically work done by A.W. Tozer that was then compiled into this book, and it sounds really good. It's a really thin read. Um, it's less than 200 pages. Yeah, it's only 165 pages. So, um, we have that as an option, but any Christian nonfiction you own, it can be done. Prompt number five, or challenge number five, is to read a book about good versus evil. So, this could be biblical fiction, this can be Christian fiction. I'm going to go with Christian fantasy, because most of the time, Christian fantasy, you have good versus evil. So, my number one pick is definitely going to be The Mark of the Raven by Morgan L. Bussey, because you have good, which is the light, and evil, which is called The Dark Lady, and it's very, very heavy on good versus evil in this book it is so good and i just i love this i love this trilogy so much the ravenwood saga trilogy is bomb okay bomb but we have this as an option the other christian fantasy i have for you guys is going to be dawn singer by john lynn boygett because again this is another one of those good versus evil books where you can actually prominently see the good versus the evil um and even though it is a fantasy world you're still understanding what side is jesus and god and what side is the devil so that's why i went with two fantasy picks for that but um even if you're reading like a thriller or a suspense go for it as long as it has good versus evil in it okay the sixth prompt is to read a five-star prediction and for that i have two books as an option so i have a christian nonfiction. this is going to be victory over the darkness by neil t anderson i have three of his bible studies so when i saw this book at my local library for their book so i had to snatch it up now this one however does have someone's annotations in it already but shockingly it does not bother me because I feel like it'll add to the reading. Like, this person really annotated up in this book, you guys. They in annotated in pencil. And then I think in the back, they started, yeah, annotating in pen. So, I'm going to enjoy reading this. Uh, see? Like, the person really annotated. And normally, I don't like people writing in books, like other books. But, um... I'm excited to read this, and I feel like it's going to be a five-star read. I'm going to read this before diving into the Bible studies, but um, yeah, I think this is going to be a five-star read for me. The other book that I have is going to be Biblical Fiction, and that's going to be Iscariot by Tosca Lee, and this is a novel of Judas Iscariot, and I feel like it's going to be a five-star read. I feel like it's going to give me a heart for Judas because I don't like Judas. We all know who Judas is. He betrayed Jesus, then killed himself, um, but I feel like this is going to give me more of a backstory you know, and even though it is fictional, obviously, um, I feel like it'll help me give more humanity to Judas. Because a lot of the times when we read, when we read the Bible, we look at these people and the things that we do, we forget that they're human as well. So I feel like biblical fiction allows me to understand that these people are human, even though parts of this is fictional and parts of this is fact. Um, it'll help me to kind of sort of get into the mind of Judas in a way, if that makes sense. So I feel like it's going to be a five-star read just because of that. But yeah, we have Judas Iscariot by Tosca Lee, which is about Judas.
Challenge number seven or prompt number seven is to read a Christian fiction that is not biblical. So what I mean by that is to step outside of the biblical fiction realm because there are other great Christian reads. There's Christian contemporaries, you have Christian suspense, Christian thriller, um, you have historical, you have fantasy. I'm here for the Christian fantasy all day, every day. Any Ted Decker book, you're good to go. But I decided to go with two suspense novels because, like I said, I'm trying to broaden my horizons and genre such can with, you know, suspense. I'm not a suspense person. But this first book is Mind Games by Nancy Mahel. Mahel, I think that's how you say it. But um, I'm going with this book because this is going to be the buddy read for me and my sis Stephanie over at Colton Beauty and Books. We're going to be buddy reading this for the month of January, and this is Romantic Suspense. I'm excited for this because the girl is a part of the BAU. There, I think the FBI is involved. Yeah, the FBI, BAU type of stuff, and I'm here for it. I'm here for it all day, every day, so I'm excited to dive into this, but we have this as an option. I also have this one, which is Storm Rising by Ronnie Kendig. It's the first book in the Book of the Wars. This is Christian Suspense. And um, this, again, deals with the government. It deals with the Old Testament and ancient prophecies. And it takes place in Bulgar Bulgaria? No. It takes place somewhere in Russia. So, it sounds like it's going to be epic. And um, anything dealing with relics and Old Testament and prophecies and its suspense, it, it's, it has to grip me, right? It has to grip me. So, we have this as my other option. Prompt number eight is to read a book that has one of the nine fruits in the title. For that, I have a Christian nonfiction. This one is Finding the Love of Jesus from Genesis to Revelation. This is by Elise Fitzpatrick. And obviously, we have love. Love. Okay, love. And this is a really thin book. This book is also less than 200 pages, I think. Yeah, it's 152 pages. So um, I'm excited to dive into this and really just see Jesus from Genesis to Revelations. I think this is going to be great. The next book I have is Historical Fiction Romance, and that is going to be The Number of Love, the first book in the Code Breakers by Rosanna and White. I have to read this because I have to read and review the second book in the same month, so I have this as an option. Um, technically, I don't have to read this book first because it's a companion novel to the second book, which the second book is called Wings of Devotion. Um, that book will be coming in the mail to me soon, but we have this. It has the word love. Um, again, it doesn't have to be fictional it could be non-fiction i just went with the word love because love is actually going to be my word of the year for 2020 which i'll have more information on my word and verse of the year coming soon for you guys but those two options complete my um, prompt for reading a book with love or a fruit of the spirit in the title Prompt number nine, or challenge number nine, is to read a Christian classic. So that could be anything from A.W. Tozer, Charles Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon, or from C.S. Lewis. And of course, I still have this big hunk here. I only read the Screw Tape Letters last year. I adored that book. That book was so good. Screw Tape Letters was kind of, it was a mix between nonfiction and fiction. Um, I loved it so much, but for this, I have Mere Christianity that I definitely want to read, and I already, like, marked it off where it is, um, and it doesn't look like it's a lot of pages, so I'm definitely excited to read Mere Christianity, um, so we have that as an option, but again, it can be any classic, be it a Christian fiction classic or a Christian nonfiction classic. I'm just going with C.S. Lewis because I have to review this. I'm still slacking on my reviews, which kind of sucks, and it's really bad, but my goal is to finish this book before 2020, like, finish it before 2020, so we have that. And the last one is to read a recommendation. And for that, I have two books. I, I can't remember who specifically recommended it to me, but they were recommended to me from YouTube. So the first one is Gods and Kings by Lynn Austin. All I know is that this follows Hezekiah. Yes, Hezekiah and Zechariah. So, um, yep, we have that. And then I also have Left Behind by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins. This is a novel of the Earth's last days, and so many people have recommended this to me. This is also considered a Christian classic in a sense, but I'm going to go with this as a recommendation because a lot of people have recommended this book to me, a lot. And many have said that I would enjoy it. So I got the first 12 books from my local library's book sale, and I decided once a, one book a month I will be reading. Um, so I should be done with this entire series, hopefully by the end of the year, hopefully, um, because I have 12 of the 13, I can just get the 13th book on e-read, on, um, my e-reader, excuse me, and then I also have the prequel trilogy, which I have the first two books to that, but I can again get the third book on my e-reader, so I'm hoping to finish this series by the end of 2020. But that is everything for this video announcement. Again, it's a Faith Reads readathon. I'm super excited about it. 
Um, there will be more information on my blog where you can also download the documents for you guys if you need it. Um, the hashtags and everything. I will, again, like I said, have an updated video with me sharing with you guys my actual TBR. Most of these books that you saw will be on my TBR, but um, I'm going to have an updated video. Again, you do not have to complete all of these prompts. I'm most likely going to not do all like, I'm not probably going to have 10 books. I'm probably maybe have five books that'll work for multiple prompts. Um, You know, one prompt can work, one book, excuse me, can work for like five prompts, depending on how you look for it. So it's definitely up to you how you want to do this. Again, it's going to be fun. I don't want this to be stressful or anything like that. Normally, I would start my Bible studies in book club in January, but I really want January to be a low key kind of month. It is renewing. It is refreshing. Even the videos that I do for 2020 um, are going to be um, videos that are refreshing. Um, they're not going to be heavy. I'm not going to start the heavy things until February. February is when we'll start book club and Bible study up again. But um, for the month of January, I just want it to be a chill month, a relaxing month because it's really cold and it's wintry and things like that. New year, fresh mind. And that's that. So again, update video will come will be coming soon with my actual tbr but i think that's it for this video again if you guys are interested just click down below for more information go to my blog and um yeah i think that's it so i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for liking this video thank you for subscribing if you're not subscribed subscribe and if you are subscribed click the bell to stay notified and i'll see you guys in the next video bye